it's connecting right so do you do you all want me to keep the video on or it's or office like that is okay let me know whatever works for you much mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let me be with the crowd the herd mentality <laughs> so right so it's amazing that july month when it starts it really brings all those fresh memories of Didi Man Mohini. A disclaimer here before I go ahead that I haven't had any sustenance from Didi Man Mohini. I have been into knowledge only from late 2008 and early 2009. But having heard the stories from so many of the seniors in the Yagya, <clears throat> you can really relate to what they say. A very, very special soul, technically, we call Didi Manmohini. So when I say word technically, she's the only Didi of the organization because the title of Didi goes to her. Because whenever Brahma Baba used to say, Didi ko bolo, Didi ko bolo, that was always Didi Manmohini. Okay, it was Prakash Mani was more of Dadi. And these two souls are so special. Baba used to always say Didi Dadi ki jodi, which means the couple, which Didi and Dadi are, they are really wonderful. And this couple, though, is a couple. So there are actually two bodies, but in but one soul, because they were so much in tandem and so much in harmony with each other that the souls that time never felt that there's any thing uh, which they wished for and they didn't get. All the souls in Madhuban, the Brahmins visiting Madhuban from abroad, all of them received such beautiful sustenance from both of them. And as the song was showed here, it was played that uh, with Avyak Pab Dada, Dadi Gulzar in between, and both of them on each side, Didi and Dadi, on each side of Avyak Pab Dada. And that's what happened from 1965 onwards till 1983 when the Didi Manmohini left the body. So what we'll try to do is today's 21st, next Sunday's 28th. So I think the latter part of Didi's life where uh, her slogan which she started in 1981 her slogan became Ab Ghar Jana Hai. Now we all have to return back to home. And uh, this slogan came in 1981, and two years continuously, she had this constant churning inside her that now all of us need to go home, need to go home. And then there's this beautiful song, which we'll be playing next time, Rakhi, when remember it without fail, we'll play this song of Abghar Janai, because it was in her memorial, memorial that this song was actually created. It was recorded in one way, right from that moment when Didi left the body. And actually her death was very tragic. We don't say death, we say leaving the body actually. So we'll discuss that latter half of hers, the slogan, Ab Ghar Jana Hai, and all the details related to her death and so many unique things which Ramesh Bhai had to share about the end when it was there for her because everything happened in Mumbai and Ramesh Bhai was very much close to her that time there because he was the one who had his own house over there. He was an advocate by profession and he used to take care of all the souls. I think June, July, August, these are three beautiful months. June is Mama, July is Didi Manmohini and 25th August is Dadi Prakash Mani. So we have these fond memories of all these three, uh, I mean, so what do you call administrators actually. So the first initial administrative head was Mama, 1965 till 1965 from say, <clears throat> we don't know exactly when Mama became, but if you can consider from 1936 onwards when Mama came in, when the Yagya started and Mama was the first few souls of them who came. So from say 1937 onwards till 1965, it was Mama. These around uh, um, around 30 years, approximately 30 years, 28 years. And then 
after that 1965 to 1969 when mama left baba was alone brahma baba was alone so that time the role of dadi prakashmani wasn't there so from 1964 65 sorry to 69 till brahma baba became avyak these four years it was actually didi manmohini who was the official administrator that time these titles these titles didn't mean a lot the administrative head the chief additional chief additional administrative head these really titles didn't have any meaning but didi was also named as the controller of the yagya baba used to call her controller but again control is a very strong word which no one used to use it but it was baba's word for her, but she was just the official head that time from 65 to 69 so let's begin first with uh, that Didi Manmohini is uh, how she revamped everything in the Yagya. So there are many things which are because of Didi Manmohini. So let's go sequentially so that we don't forget each of them. So the present day format of the Amritvela meditation which we do, that's Dane of Didi Manmohini. It is, she's the one who said that yes this Amritvela it can't be everyone sitting in their own nice cozy rooms and doing there no that's all Jutka Yoga Jutka Yoga means you're trying to sleep and then you're doing yoga as well so all of this Didi said that we will do it as together in a collective way Sangat Hith Yoga and therefore Didi herself she used to sit on the Gaddi what we call Gaddi that's on the front seat where the sisters sit and again, without any support. I mean, in those days, good old days of Madhuban, Pandav Bhavan, 65 to 69, you all know that the Gaddis which were there, they didn't have any uh, backrest. They, they, they weren't chairs. There was just actually a small wooden stuff where you sit on it, a stool-like thing which was covered with white. And then people used to just sit there. Baba used to sit there. Didi Manmohini in the morning conducting meditation. So Amritvela meditation was Didi's uh, uh, thing. It started with that. Second, she said that we should also be having after 12 hours. So the Nima Sham Yoga. So 6.30 to 7.30. She was the one instrumental in getting this. That we should also come collectively and sit in meditation in the evenings. Third thing we said that uh, the traffic control, as we see those traffic control which goes on, just a moment. <clears throat> just try to switch off the traffic control which goes off in between, it reminded me suddenly. Yeah, so the traffic control swarup which we have nowadays, every one minute that song goes Shanti Ki Shakti and then those 7, 8, 10, 30, 12, 5.30, 7.30 in the evening, 9.30, so on and so forth. So Didi introduced all this. So it is really a big thanks to her for that. So many spiritual disciplines. Then next, while she used to really visit many centers all over, uh, she introduced again this concept of having Baba's room. She said, every center should have a Baba's room. And why should there be Baba's room? Because people should, whilst they come in and go out, greet Baba meet Baba, say good morning to Baba before Murli when they come and when they exit also say goodbye to Baba and also that was, that was hers. And also primarily Baba's camera came into being because she was very much about offering bhog and this offering bhog obviously at the BK centers bhog is offered very diligently three times a day breakfast, the lunch and the dinner, all those three times. Abroad, it may be very difficult because people really don't have so much of time. The sisters over there are working as well. And the unique thing in the West, or maybe abroad, not so much in India, is that people don't really eat so many times a day. It's two meals should be more than enough. And usually they cook such a big thing so because they have to carry their lunch boxes with them. They usually don't <clears throat> cook anything in the evening. And Dadi Janki, it reminds me here, quite a few souls say that, Jayanti Didi, I remember she said that Dadi Janki didn't like this because initially when she went in 1974, she was typically Indian. 
very much Indian at heart and used to offering bhog three times a day to Baba. Whilst here she saw what is happening here. Their brunch is together, breakfast and lunch, rush, rush, rush. They're all going for their jobs, but that was okay. And a few years initially, Dadi Janki actually, sorry, I'm going from Didi Manmoni to Dadi Janki, but this uh, topic relates to closely to both of them. So Dadi Janki used to really the first few years when there was not, not much of Vacha Seva in London, what Dadi used to do is she used to cook herself for all the souls for the first few students who came into knowledge, you all know it's Sister Denise, Brother Ken and Brother Charlie, the first foundation after Didi Jayanti. So she used to cook, she used to feed them. She used to be in the kitchen, do all the work. Imagine Dadi Janki, the chief of Brahma Kumaris from since uh, when Dadi Prakashmani left the body 2000 onwards, 2007 onwards till 2020 when she left the body, Dadi Janki in COVID. And before that, she was the one, the prime karta dharta of all the services in the West. She was, Dadi Janki was identified as a foreigner, a, a, an instru, a soul instrumental for establishing the foreign services. So she used to really cook. And then she used to say nothing doing. If you don't want to cook in the evening, that's perfectly fine. But you should do some bhog offering in the form of either dry fruits or your wet fruits or something or the other for Baba. You just can't say, oh, we are not cooking anything, so we are not offering anything. So this trend of offering bhog and sitting in Baba's room. And here Didi Manmohini also introduced one more concept of all the, the grahasthis, that's all of us who are not living at center. She said, I all not Baba's children. I all not surrendered brothers and sisters. So why are you all not offering bhog to Baba at your houses as well? And then this trend started of offering bhog. All the grahasthis as well, who are ones at homes, not the officially surrendered BK sisters and brothers. They also started offering and they said a big thanks to Didi Manmohini because they found their morale so elevated because of just this one thing. That even we are at par with the surrendered brothers and sisters. And she said, yes, who said you all are not surrendered? You all are surrendered through the mind, through the body. Though not officially or are wearing white clothes and batches, flashy batches, no. But you all are also surrendered. So this was the official way she began. And then... This is the way that, you know, she uh, became very close to the Grahasthis. And it reminds me uh, that many Brahmin souls from Delhi identify with her. Uh, because there she started services. She was the one who started the first few centers in Delhi, just uh, to let you all know. Okay, and a few other things. Actually, what I'm trying to tell is the disciplines, the maryadas of the Yajna. In that the present format, which you can see of the Murli, again is because of Didi Manmohini. Initially, uh, Baba's Murlis, which were there, they were really very long Murlis. Many people also uh, take this in a different way. So let me give you a perspective here. People sometimes say that previous uh, the Murlis now are cut short uh, and they are edited. No, it's not like that. Raju Bhai doesn't do that. So... If you can see, if you read some Sakar Murli, which we read from Monday to Saturday onwards, you see there are some points which are in connection to daily Murli when you read. There are a few points which repeat. Say if Monday, if you read something, Tuesday, something same will come on one of the points on Tuesday as well. And then it will be carried forward on Wednesday and Thursday. So you know why that is? Because initially when Baba, Brahma Baba, the Murlis, Sakar Murlis, as we know today, they are from uh, 19, they are just from four or five years, which are just revamped, sort of copied, pasted by, by Raju Bhai. And uh, initially, Baba used to speak continuously. So they were very, very long Murlis. So then Raju Bhai cuts them into, say, one big Murli is cut into three or four days Murlis, because in that Raju Bhai has to adjust the question answer, then dharana yuktis are what we call the points for dharana, then the blessing comes and the slogan comes, a few announcements in the end and so on and so forth. So the present day format, this format was 
actually uh, introduced by Didi Manmohini. So Didi Manmohini used to say, come, let's play badminton. So uh, like people used to get confused, what's badminton? So this badminton was, badminton means badminton of the Murli, whereby Didi used to very diligently as a student come, sit, she was very much uh, about time conscious. She was very disciplined. I'll come to the big story about how she was so particular about maintaining discipline of time. So she used to come with her diary and her diary was so famous because she had her own short forms, her own vocabulary. Then whatever Murli Baba used to say, she used to pick out one prominent point from that, underline that and make that as the Mahavakya make that as the main sentence, the first sentence of the Murli, the Sakar Murli particularly. Then looking at the entire Murli, she used to devise questions and answers. And you know the present day format, you can see the question on the top, the answer right next to that. And then you can see that that Q&A has come from somewhere in the Murli. And that forms the basis of that day's Murli. And then further down, Didi used to say, come on, let's revise now. Let's play badminton. So she used to throw questions and she used to expect answers from the Brahmins there. And then she said, now let us just summarize in the end. So the summary part, the two points, you know, there are two basic points, two points of knowledge from the entire Murli. She started that. And then... The blessing and the slogan claim later. I'll tell you that later in maybe in August when we discuss about Dadi Prakashmani, these blessings which come, they are totally, they are not Baba's Mahavakya. They are not Baba's uh, Sakarwani. But these blessings are something special which happened later uh, during Dadi Prakashmani's time. So that I'll tell you sometime later because otherwise we are digressing from Didi Manmohini's topic. So there you are. And uh, she used to call them uh, Baba for Brahma Baba used to call all the souls in the chamber. You know, what's the chamber? Chamber was a small office in Pandavan. I don't know where exactly it was, but there was a small cubicle where they used to sit. Brahma Baba used to sit with them, revise the points. And then maybe what has to be done for the day onwards, Baba used to discuss in short. And then there on, they used to start their day from after the Murli. So such was a powerful soul Didi Man Mohini and uh, mind well she, she was from a very wealthy background it was something called JT Chen Rai Farm, Firms, not Farm, sorry Firm, Chen Rai Chen Rai is again a Sindhi surname usually people identify Sindhis as Anis, Kriplani so on and so forth like I'm Matnani, there are so many others Adwani and all those but there's a clan of uh, Sindhis who don't have the knees in their surnames N.I. but she was Chen Rai and why am I telling you all these details because right now as we speak there's a hospital in Mumbai if anyone knows this hospital let me see, let me interact with you all rather than me giving you all a lecture I'm feeling I'm giving a lecture now. so anyone Induja hospital? which one? Induja no. Atma Kumari. Yes, so number one is not right. Guess number two. Brahma Kumari Hospital at Andheri. Oh, no, no, that's also not one. I mean, me, man. Okay, Usha Ben has written it in the chat box. Fantastic. We'll go there. Just Lok. And you know how Just Lok has come into being? It is Just and Lok. There are two uh, parts of it. Just stands for Jasomati. And Lok stands for Lokumal. So it's a couple. And these were uh, Didi Manmohini's uh, Chacha and Chachi. So they were, I think, paternal uncle and aunt of Didi Manmohini. So they are still very much in being in Mumbai, but they are very incognito in the sense they are no more in knowledge. You know, that's the beauty of the Yajna. That all these Dadis who have come from the Sindhi families, from rich, wealthy families of Sindh, and there was so much of uh, resistance from their families. Their families didn't like the BKs. You all know, you know all those stories from Karachi and Hyderabad. They had to really undergo so much of resistance. And they were also beaten up. You all know that. I'll come to the story of how Didi was beaten up only once, <clears throat> never twice, thrice. <clears throat> and that was a beautiful scene in the drama. So let me come to these Chenrai firms and this Chenrai family. 
so jasomati and lokumal they are still very much both a couple chacha chachi of didi manmohini and uh, it is their family this hospital which is at i think the peder road it's a famous big hospital and lot of work goes there as a doctor i know that because we keep going for conferences and this hospital is right in the heart of south mumbai which is again a very prominent posh area of mumbai so didi belongs there to that wealthy family and but she never had this uh, obviously we can never say the ego because they were all so wiseless souls but she never even had that slight uh, in her mind that oh i belong to such a wealthy family and right from beginning at the age of 10 years she was married you know at that time all the children good old days of india they used to be married very early so devi was married at 10 years she was having all the wealth in the family no abs- no i mean no illness uh, no suffering no dukh what we say so she would not be keen to be keen to have any attraction towards spirituality uh, nothing like that like and unlike mama who came into knowledge because of her mother and her mossy which is her maternal aunt because mama's uh, particularly the father and the brother they left the body suddenly in an accident and i think that was abroad out of india in sri lanka and that really her mother it shocked her mother to such an extent that she went into sort of severe depression as well and she was not enjoying so that was mama's story where mama was sort of they became bankrupt because both the br- brother and the father left the body so they didn't have any money that way while this one here she was totally a wealthy soul now despite being wealthy she was very grounded and right from a very young age she was into sewing you know the machines which people use for the sewing machine and she was an expert in preparing clothes and this is the way she came she came into contact with baba so brahma baba i mean so the story here goes like that and in short i'm not going in details that brahma baba Uh, before coming before 19 this is about before 1936 mind well this is before the yagya started so brahma baba was just arranging all he was making the preparations for the marriage of his elder son and i don't know his name so let's not go there but his elder son's wife you know who it was it was bridge again another mumbai soul bridge indra dadi so uh, it was just a few years or maybe a couple of months before coming into knowledge i may be wrong but it was few years before 1936 so that time even he didn't know that he will be the instrument for shiv baba so brahma baba had fixed this wedding and uh, they were actually it was it happened in a little bit of a rush i don't know exactly what the rush was and then he wanted to get the clothes done all the wedding garments of both the bride and the bridegroom so then didi then he came to know that there's some that time she was called gopi she was not didi manmohini that time so he approached gopi and gopi was famous that's her childhood name gopi and her lokic name before coming to brahma kumaris so they heard he heard that there's a soul called gopi who's very good at sewing and then he approached her and she said of course i can do it it will be pleasure to do it and then within two days all the wedding garments were ready so this way she had this sort of coming and going into baba's house very often because obviously when you are sewing garments for someone you need to run a few trials and particularly uh, for the couple the bride and the bridegroom it makes a lot of difference so she used to come and go and then she used to see that drama baba also is a wealthy jewel jeweler a wealthy diamond merchant but again they were very humble and they didn't have this big ego about themselves that they are so wealthy so she noticed all these qualities which devi manmohini had shared that i used to really be in big awe of brahma baba how not that shiv baba is coming into him but he is so humble and he was a geeta party so this way she was in touch with this family the kriplani family and the chain rai family and then once after the yagya started in 1936 1937 the initial days so once baba invited her because she was a contact she was initially a contact she was not a bk at all as we use these words now bk and contact souls so baba told her why don't you come for the satsang so she came once and then uh, 
Didi Gopi, sister Gop, I mean Gopi Didi Manmohini, she used to always say that she had this attraction for Sri Krishna. And she used to always like hearing the stories of Bhagavat, that how the Gopis and the Gopikas, they were so much in touch with Krishna. So she had this uh, fond attraction towards Krishna. And then when the first time uh, she came, she didn't go in trance, unlike uh, a few other souls like Dadi Prakashmani went into trance and just enjoyed the first experience. She didn't go in trance, but she really enjoyed whilst Brahma Baba was reciting the satsang. Initially, they used to call Om Mandli and satsang. She liked it and then she had a little bit of vision of Krishna from him. So she got attracted to that aspect, but she was a very practical lady. I'll tell you why I'm saying this practical thing. Right from the beginning, she's very practical in the yajna. Like Dadi Prakashmani was a more, we say, balance of love and law. So Dadi Prakashmani was all gaga, very loveful, but Didi was very lawful. In the sense, uh, Dadi Prakashmani used to like to spend flamboyantly on everything. She used to say, oh, all the children have come to Madhuban, all Baba's children, let them feed this, that, let them let us not worry about money and so on and so forth. But Didi used to say, Dadi, uh, you have to be careful because we have to run the yagya. So you can't be spending just so much that we don't have then in enough to take care of our routine things. So anyway, that was Dadi Prakashmani, all flamboyant. And Didi Manmoini knew how to tighten the screws. And she, she was very careful because she was the one who used to run the entire yagya controlling in the sense all the background work that how much of uh, uh, the garments are coming, like every sister, surrendered sister has to be given, or surrendered brother also has to be given clothes from the yagya. They have to be given saris. So which sari the sisters have to be given because you can't give expensive saris, white saris. You have to give the saris which are sort of affordable, not cheap, but affordable. And so that... And you can give them such saris which long for a while. You can't give them such ones which really uh, go bad fast. I mean, so like silk cloth, you know the cloth. Didi said, never use silk because if you use silk, you know, silk is very delicate. It has to be taken care of very diligently. Whilst cotton, you can use like uh, every now and then and it remains for a long time. So that way. So anyway, so cutting the story short that Didi was more of lawful and Dadi Prakashmani was more of loveful. So here then, I, I think I started this yeah, with uh, when she came first to the Yajna and as I said, she was practical. So then Baba asked her a question, Brahma Baba, that what did you like about the satsang? Can you tell me Gopi? So uh, Gopi, that Bahen said, uh, Didi Manmoini, that uh, why is he asking me this? I mean, is he wanting, because she was feeling a bit attracted because she was getting this attraction of Krishna from him. So she said, okay, I'll tell you, but one thing I need to tell you that I am married. And, uh, you know, in the Hindu tradition, in Sindhis, we are taught, or even the Hindu tradition, good old days of Hindu families that your pati is your Parmeshwar, which means your husband is your guru, your husband is your God and everything. So this was the reply which she gave to Brahma Baba in that question what he had asked her, that what did you like about satsang? So Brahma Baba was a bit taken aback and he told her, I didn't ask you to make me your guru and I am no guru here. I'm just asking you about how you felt about the satsang. So she, she said, yeah, I liked it. So this way, Brahma Baba realized that this soul can't be lured. She just can't be sort of... Uh, and right at the first instance, she doesn't come out with things. So then he realized that this is the special quality of Didi Manmohini. And this is what made her the Yajna controller in future. And then gradually when she started coming, she started liking, she started enjoying. And then she was the one who also pulled two other souls into Yajna. Any idea who are these other two souls? Let me know. If I give you hints, you'll get get the answer, but let me not give you hints. So it was her two family members. I've given you a big hint now, which are those two family members. Again, souls from Mumbai. So the one first one is her younger sister, that is Sheel Indra Dadi. So she got attracted because of Didi Manmohini and also the mother, that is Queen Mother. 
So these three souls came and they ardently followed Baba. And then let me tell you, this went on. She used to come to listen to satsang, go back home. But when she used to go back home, she really didn't like staying at home. But now what to do? She's a married uh, a woman, married, not woman actually, she's a married lady in one bed. Young girl, 15, 16 years of age now. So while sewing, she used to just sort of fly off into Baba's remembrance. And then she felt that this is a lot of bandhan now bonded, sitting at home. So she used to come and discuss with Brahma Baba, what to do Baba, you tell me. I really don't like to be at home. But she said, uh, Didi Manmohini, uh, Gopi, don't uh, take such drastic steps. Don't leave your home. Why? Because you are from a wealthy family. And if something happens, you all, are, you, all, you all will be in the news. Okay. And this news already is not good because many people used to say that time for the BKs that they are the ones who are destroying homes. They are making peaceful homes into peaceless homes. And also, uh, uh, they are converting, you know that sentence, that they are converting husbands and wives into brothers and sisters. They don't want this vice of lust and so on and so forth. So it was very famous. So Brahma Baba told her, be very careful. The right time will come when Baba will give you touching and then you have to leave home. And that time was just about to come. And do, does anyone know what story that is? That she then left home? Anyone? I'll take a few seconds and see. Okay. So that time came. And what happens? She used to wear specs, spectacles, glasses. And once, uh, actually her husband was quite nice with her. But once on some topic, what that they know, husband and wife, internal quarrels, he became quite upset, quite angry. And he just took his, I mean, he just slapped her. And he slapped her. This was the first slap she had received in life for the first time after being married. And it was such a tight slap that her glasses fell off. And glasses fell off. It, she broke the glasses. Then she wore those glasses. And, you know, wearing a broken glass is a sign of violence. And then this was the triggering point. And then she said, no, now it's enough. Now, let me use this as a bahana. Let me use this as the very moment in my life where I will just go to Brahma Baba. I'll tell him that I don't want to live in this home anymore because my husband has sort of, uh, he has hit me and hit me quite hard, so hard that he's broken my glasses. And the husband would be quite amazed. He didn't know that this would happen. But then she went and then she never came back because this was the reason she gave. So you see, I mean, if you look at it from a very casual perspective, in those days, this was very common, the husbands hitting their wives, right? But for Didi, it was a turning point in her life. And she used this point to the utmost advantage of her and she left the house. And I don't think they had children. I'm, I don't know because nothing is mentioned in the books of Adi Ratan. But I didn't, they didn't have any kids. So I think uh, there was one kid of hers which you, who used to visit her later. Yeah, I think she had a daughter. Yes, I think she had one. Well, let's not go there. That's not important. So then she left home and then along with this uh, Dadi Shilindra, who was her uh, sister, younger sister and queen mother. The mother of both of these. She was called queen mother. And does anyone know what was the slogan of queen mother? It's a rapid fire questions for BKs. You all should know what was Queen Mother's slogan in Hindi? Anyone can unmute and speak? No? Okay. It was Juk Juk, Mar Mar and Sik Sik. So which means three things. Jukna, Juk Juk, Mar Mar, which means to die, die. And Sik Sik means to learn. So this was Queen Mother who was this, she was labeled as Queen Mother by Brahma Baba. You know, Brahma Baba in those days, he converted everyone's name. So everyone's name was converted from Lokik to Alokik. So Didi was given this beautiful name, Gopi. She transformed into Didi Man Mohini. And why Man Mohini? Because Sapka Man Mohaleti, which means she used to really, everyone was so fond of her that she used to, 
enthrall the mind of everyone. Moh doesn't mean the wise attachment. Don't take it that. But mohana means actually be uh, attracted. Something which you are attracted to. That is called mohini. And attraction to a, your mind is attracted towards that. So man mohini. So that's a beautiful name that was given to her. And the mother of both of these was called Queen Mother because she was again a very royal soul and she was in so much of riches, her mother as well. And Shilindra Dadi, I'll tell you, if you know Shilindra Dadi, have you all seen her? Uh, particularly she's famous in that picture where Brahma Baba is feeding cake and she's one of the souls, a slim soul sitting in front and where Brahma Baba is just putting the cake in her mouth. That's the one, Dadi Shilindra. So Sheel Indra also, Sheel Indra is a beautiful name. Indra means all your Indriya, your sense organs. And Sheel means Sheetalta. Like your, your sense organs are becoming very calm and peaceful. So that was Sheel Indra. And Sheel Indra Dadi was known in the Yajna for being a very powerful trans messenger. And she used to stay in Mumbai and initially in Kolaba. And then later she came with Dadi Prakashmani in this uh, Gam Devi Center, which was main of Dadi Prakashmani Center. And there she was sort of the trans messenger and a Sandeshi for everything. So Ramesh Bhai used to always contact her, tell her, please go and ask Baba what to do for this, this, and so on and so forth. I'll cover that later when Didi Manmohini left the body, or what messages he, she got it through Ramesh, through Ramesh Bhai's insistence. So this is the way these three souls came in Yajna and now wealthy, three wealthy, rich souls coming, rich in the sense from a rich background. And uh, now when they came, all three together, having left the home, it was a big hoo-ha because this went in the papers. Oh, uh, Gopi has just been hit once and she's left and this Brahma Baba has now again lured them into the Yajna. So it was a big news that time. So now Brahma Baba said, let me not put more oil into the fire. Where will these people stay? They can't stay at uh, my place. Then it will be all the big more. Uh, it will ag get aggravated more. So he then rented out a house it's right in, in front of his house. And that rented house, he said that you all three stays here. You all three souls, Queen Mother, Didi Manmohini, and the younger sister, Shilindra, stay here. And... This is some turning point in the drama. Why? Because after this, then so many other mothers and so many other Kanya, Kumaris came and they were the ones who were keep, kept in charge. So Queen Mother was their top one and then Didi Manmohan used to take care of all these souls. So this was the way how this turning point led to her becoming fully bondage free. She coming into Yajna and then taking the reins of the Yajna, admin, becoming the administrator. And also from 1965 onwards, she became, but before 1965, it was Mama who was right in the forefront. And they had all the respect for Mama. And Brahma Baba used to tell Didi, Manmohini and Mama both. He used to tell them, Mama, you are the administrative head, but you are a Kumari. So you don't know uh, about how to run a household, right? But Didi knows how to run a household. And Didi was, as I said, affordability first, economy first, always that was the her mantra. So she said, uh, so Brahma Baba said, told Mama that whatever you have any advice if you need of how to take care of the yagya, you please be in touch with Didi Manmani. So Mama was another such humble soul. She used to always ask, take a seek advice from Didi Manmohini on things which she felt she would not be able to decide on. So uh, particularly about shopping, about deciding which clothes to buy. And you know, even the brothers, surrendered brothers and sisters are given everything, the toiletries, the toothpaste, the soaps, brushes, so on and so forth. So you have to really order everything in bulk, right? You just can't order one toothpaste or one toothbrush. That will be expensive. So all these ordering of the bulk, doing this shopping, getting the clothes, getting veggies, vegetables, also in, I mean, in economy and in bulk and in concession, all that was taken care of by Didi Manmani. So she was such a soul. And one more thing, I th uh, how are we with the time? It's 5.42 now. So should I continue for five more minutes and then 
we can or maybe 10 minutes whatever uh, so it's i'll fine. just it's fine yeah so today as it is y'all are not churning so i'm just uh, sharing her stories so one important story is that when she came into yagya uh, it was uh, she was the one who was very much like a student and she used to come with her diary and pen never absent without a diary and pen and perfect dot on time so let me tell you her schedule this all schedule is because of her as i told you all before early morning meditation 4 to 4 45 am now why am i telling you this categorically is a story behind this here so once it happened in the yagya it only happened once because it can never happen twice when didi manmohan is around because she was so strict about these things and this strict discipline is needed and i'll share the story which will tell you that because sometimes people feel i remember in our values for life series also we covered this value strictness a few weeks ago uh, bridgemon bhai sahab we were fortunate to have him covering that value so why is strictness a value why is strictness not a vice it's important strictness is closely related to discipline and determination okay we should be strict with ourselves in our disciplines and when we say determination that also comes from being strict with yourself if i have to achieve something if i have to be successful if i have to be victorious i need to really perform have my life on some regular disciplines and be determined in that effort to make those disciplines and therefore didi was very strict in that sense now i'll share this story one day it happened that the brother who sits at the <laughs> at the desk of the audio playing all the songs and all that so he played the song he was jhoom raha tha oh he was like in his own masti right so the song went on from 4:45 to 4:50 just see just five more minutes is it a big deal no we wouldn't feel that but it went on till 4:50 and what happened uh didi uh, so that day it went 4:50 and then didi was stable but she didn't like this and she then called the brother at 11 am in the morning and she said brother what did you do why did you play this song from 4:45 to 4:50 extra 5 minutes do you know what happened because of that he said didi mujhe to maza aa raha tha i was in my own nasha and all that because it was a beautiful song didi said of course i do understand what you are saying but because of that what happened bhai i'll tell you now 4:50 i left from that place so i went to my room wahan pe the tea the cup of tea which was kept became cold and then i had to tell lachu bhain to go and warm it and get it back to me by the time i get hold of her it was another 5 10 minutes late then another thing is i wanted to have a shower of the hot water that time you all know the hot water didn't used to come from geysers and all the solars which we have right now in madhuban it was a pandit pandit means someone who used to heat the water and provide one one bucket outside all the rooms so the bucket of water which was left for me outside my room i became 5 to 10 minutes late to get that bucket that became cold i had to really search that brother because he was not searchable anywhere and that took more time it was so that took me another 5 10 minutes more for that and this way everything became so delayed because of your this 5 minute song because didi has got a very disciplined life and then uh, you didn't even have the courtesy she told him that what you did brother you were only sitting at the audio and you know knew that didi manmohini always comes that i i means didi comes at the time of red light not in the white light when the white light happens so that day didn't you have the courtesy to extend that red light meditation song for five more minutes so that i could have come because when didi came uh, the, it was already white light it was just a minute ago that brother had made it white light and then didi was really shocked that oh my god it's the first time in my life i have entered the class here when it is not red light because she used to always come in the meditation and meditation was going on so this way didi told her that aapne mera record kharab kiya <laughs> and this is like the brother got a big time lesson from didi that you better don't extend anything so this shows us that how disciplined she was in her time management and we need to really be disciplined in our time management quite a few of us are but we need to be that and this was one big sabak for that brother 
And here it reminds me of another story, which I'll share also because it closely relates to the audio of uh, the same brother sitting at the audio time. And this is way back now. It comes to 1980s, uh, three, four years before Didi left the body. At that time, these tape recorders had come new into the yagya tape recorders, you know, that where we have the cassette has to be inserted and then you listen to the uh, cassette. So uh, what happened, Didi Manmohini had this uh, nice way of churning the murli and she used to churn those points and they, whatever she used to churn during the murli, they were recorded, say 15, 20 minutes. So everyone was in big awe of that. So one of the brothers who was just who just came running, the murli got over, the churning got over. This brother was late. So he came to the audio visual brother and he told him, Are you sorry, I'm late. Can you please give me the cassette? I need to go and listen to what were Didi's points from today. What was Didi's murli's murli from today's? So Didi's were the words he used. Didi's points and Didi's murli. He said, oh, I can't do like that. I can't give you the cassette like that because I have got strict instructions from Didi. This was the same audiovisual brother. You know how he would be now with Didi's uh, strictness, right? You can relate to that because he had a big time uh, thing from Didi before. So he said, I have to ask permission because that's what Didi has told me that you have to take permission if anyone wants to hear the cassette. So he said, Are, isme kya hai de do? he said, no, I can't do that. So he said, okay, go and get Didi's permission. So the audiovisual brother came. He said, Didi, there's a brother who's come. He's asking for your tape cassette. And uh, can I give it to him? She said, absolutely no, you can't give like that. And then he said, Didi, he is uh, liking your murli. Didi said, repeat this. What did you say? Didi's murli. Is it my murli? He said, no, no, sorry. It is not your murli, but... The way your voice, your churning points, all that, he is attracted by that, therefore he wants. So here, Didi's antenna went up. Didi's antenna went up means Didi felt, my God, these people are a lagav and jhukav. They are, you know, these two words in Hindi, they are influenced by my voice and they are influenced by my churning points. And then Didi said in her mind that I need to cut this right now because I'll carry on this forward when we start next Sunday because this is a very important point. That Didi was one of such souls in the Yagya. She was very powerful, very influential, but she made sure that she doesn't influence any soul towards herself. She said that it is Baba's Murli. Everything is Baba, 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 not me. Don't get influenced by my churning. Don't get influenced by my voice. And Didi was very particular about this because why am I telling you this story? I think it's important in nowadays science and technology age for all of us as BKs because we have so much of access to science and technology and we get influenced by people so easily. People means Brahmins. We like someone's class. We want to subscribe to that person's YouTube channel. And nowadays, people feel that having YouTube channels, every every Tom, Dick and Harry is having their YouTube channel. With due respect, I'm not trying to uh, sort of uh, make any comment on anyone. People feel that, yes, I'm having my YouTube channel. What for? For Seva. But here, this is Maya using this science and technology. You're just using it as a means to do Seva. But Maya is getting its job done. How? Because whenever, say, I don't have my YouTube channel, but say if I have it, the moment I am putting a new recording on that, or the moment I'm opening my channel, I'm trying to look at what? Look at number of my subscriptions, how many subscribers I have I got. And what is this? Is this really Seva? It is becoming Swarth, right? It is not really Seva here. And then I'm trying to see that how many have subscribed, how, many, how much famous I have, have I become? So this is all Nam Man Shan Ki Bhuk. You know all that. So let's come to Didi's story. Didi Manmohini then, she said, send that brother who came late, send him to me. That brother got a bit scared. Oh my God, Didi, strict. Didi was famous for being strict. And by now you have understood how strict she was. So she said, come brother. She gave, none of, none of the Didis or the Dadis ever used to be sort of very official and strict and say directly. But uh, Didi first told her, come, bhai, sit down. She gave her some toli. She said, I'll come back in a few minutes. You finish off the toli. 
Then Didi came, gave her powerful drishti and said, Bolo bhai, I'll say in Hindi. Bolo bhai, kaise aana hua? How are you here? She said, Didi, I love your churning points of the murli. I love your murli. She said, kya bolta hai tum bhai? This is the first time when Antina again went up of Didi. This is not my murli bhai. It is Baba's murli. Ha ha, sorry Didi. Your mur it's Baba's murli, but the way you churn, your, your voice is so blah, blah, all that. He said, and Didi said, Are bhai, what are you saying? You're attracted by my voice. You're attracted by my personality. So nothing doing. This cassette is not going to come to you because Didi, this is Didi's safety. Didi is trying to protect herself. And also Didi is trying to protect you from this big maya of attachment and getting influenced from each other. So, Bhai, what do you want? You want the churning points of the murli? Didi is giving you the diary. Go take the diary for 10-15 minutes. Go and read whatever today's points are. Get connected to Baba with the murli points. Don't get connected to me. And that was a big lesson for, for that brother. And it's a big lesson for all of us that this strictness of Didi is so important for us here. Why it's important? Because here now we have this big time Maya for Brahmins. We like someone's class. We like someone's meditation commentary to meditate on. And then we go on and then we go, we are attracted towards their churning. Uh, which is, this is with due respect to whoever is churning, whatever way they are churning. It's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. But I think we should not be attracted by anyone. We should only be attracted by Murli. Therefore, it's important that Murli should be, even if you are not able to go to the center, that is the best. Go to the center and in, in a gathering, you churn on the points. But more important is if you are listening it from the YouTube or whatever, it's good to read the Murli yourself first because we have the app, the Murli apps which are there. Read it for yourself and avert Murli also. Listen to it in Baba's voice. Get connected to Baba. And this reminds me that how Didi was so strict about this that first of all, what is our complaint? All of us have this complaint that hamara yog nahi lagta. We just get distracted. We can't concentrate. So imagine if I have my YouTube channel, there are say 100 subscribers, for example, I'm getting connected to those 100 subscribers. How? Because each of those soul is remembering me and they are pulling my intellect towards them. And then I'm also getting attracted to them. And this is just with 100. If I have 1 lakh subscribers, you can imagine the pull which I'm having. Obviously, if I'm a strong soul, if I'm a yogi soul, these won't be able to influence me. But all of us know our stage of yoga is still not so developed. So we really need to make sure that we need to be uh, digital detox for Brahmins is it has become too much of social media, too much of Brahmin, and this also uh, Brahmin classes and so on and so forth. So I think we need to cut down that and we should take the example of Didi from this week onwards. Let's try to implement that till next 20th July when we meet again and discuss in detail more about Didi Manmani. I'm so sorry, I have really exceeded the time. We just have five more minutes left for 6 a.m. So I think I'll stop here and then we'll discuss something, a few other beautiful points on 28 July and also particularly related to the last few years of Didi Manmoni that how she became so nyara pyara, very detached and came out with this slogan of Ab Ghar Jana, we need to return home. Okay, thank you Om Shanti. Right, so I think we'll just spend a moment in silence. We'll just reflect on what was shared. Or if you want to play some Didi's music or Didi's song, uh, feel free, Rakhi Ben. Thank you.
शासन में मर्यादा की उदाहरती सत्य साधना साधगी की बनकर जीवन ज्योति जली यज्ञ स्नेही रक्षक उनसा बनना है सच्ची श्रद्धांजलि अब घर जाना अब घर जाना जही मंत्र याद आए जब जब संगम युग आएगा तब तब सारा जग गाएगा जब जब संगम युग आएगा तब तब सारा जग Thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you to Baba. Thank you, Manoj Bhai. Thank you, Divine Family. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time. Have a blissful day.